obviously people remember Clay's game six in 2016. You seem to be disappointed. No. Oh, okay, because it's a, no, it's I, a I, remarkable I, feat how he played. The, yeah, I mean, I've said three words, so you'll have a better idea of what I'm going to say in a moment. But the, the point that I'm Either making... Either that or took your breath away. The, no, yeah, I mean, it's, it's when I said this guy, like, he, he's the least talked about warrior. He's the least controversial. He plays both ways. We, he, we, the only story we've heard of him this year, non-basketball, is that he might take less money to stay there. And in their biggest spots, game six in 2016, he had 41 points and 11 three-pointers in Oklahoma City to save their season, at least temporarily. Now, because they ended up blowing out Houston, people are going to say, ah, how important were these points? Man, the reason they blew out Houston was because of the run he went on. He was on a court with three guys that have won MVPs or will. Harden, KD, Steph. And he was the best player on Saturday night. He was, he was as good as you can be in as big of a spot as you can be once again. He's a guy that scored 63 points once in three quarters. We saw him have a 37-point quarter. Like, Clay locked in. Clay hot is unlike, I think, it's unlike any player in the league right now. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's really hard to shoot the basketball in these critical situations. The amount of physical contact they allow you in the playoffs we saw no one shoot the ball what Clay did in game number six. We saw in the whole playoffs, we saw no one, we saw people score, but we saw no one shoot from deep and do what Clay did. It was an amazing performance. And yes, their season hanging. And I'm not waiting on Steph. I'm not waiting on KD. I'm going to fire my shot. And when Clay gets in that type of zone, there's only a few players that are better or can rival him when he's hot like that. And you've only seen it like that a couple times. And those times you mentioned. Phenomenal performance by Clay. And give, go, ahead. go ahead. You give the Rockets a shot if Clay does this again? Oh, if Clay no 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 no. If Clay if Clay goes for thirty plus points, they're drawing dead. Like they that that that, that can't happen. He almost scored thirty points just in three, so it's not a performance you expect someone to bounce back and do the same thing again. And it made me, and what you were reacting to, my initial reaction is almost like a stupor. Like, I was asking these questions on Twitter during and after the game. Like, is Clay Thompson the best player we've ever seen who's never been the best player on his own team? Like, people mentioned Kevin McHale. What, what, about, uh, what about James Worthy? Like, I, man, Clay, Clay thus far, and if he stays with Steph his whole career, probably will be the whole time. Like, He's never been the best guy on his team, and he's one of the 12 best players alive. I mean, he's amazing, man. And when he's locked in, it's, there's nothing you can do. There's just nothing you can do. One of the 12 best players. Number one right now would be who? Well, probably LeBron James. Okay, back to LeBron James. He was pretty good last night, scored 35 in a Game 7 win. He's been pretty good all playoffs long, leading the Cavs to a fourth straight finals. He's been pretty good his whole career, some calling him the best ever, Nick. But others say we should pump the brakes on comparisons. Kobe Bryant is one of those others. Last night tweeting, we can enjoy one without tearing down one. I love what he's doing. Don't debate what can't be definitively won by anyone. Hashtag enjoy my five. Hashtag enjoy MJ6. Hashtag enjoy LBJ Quest. Cece, what were your thoughts on Kobe's tweet? I'm not, I'm not surprised. I've always looked at Kobe as being one of the best basketball players. I thought that he didn't get the necessarily the recognition that he deserved with the five championships um, uh, that he had there. He's one of my favorite players to watch over the last four years. Um, him, LeBron, and uh, Michael Jordan, just because of their style. They play on the wing. Um, but I, I, I love Kobe Bryant. I love watching Kobe play. I thought his offensive move, his overall mentality, the physical conditioning that he was always in, I thought they were very, very special. In his tweet, I probably would have, he didn't have to put himself in it. I don't mind him putting himself in it because how many people you know got five championships? And we're getting opinions of everyone else, and most of us don't have no basketball experience, so why would we get the opinion of one of the greatest players that ever played? So I respect Kobe's basketball IQ, and I respect, too, how much Kobe loves the game. He doesn't have a whole bunch of hater in him when he goes to analyzing players. And he makes a good point that how can we enjoy something without tearing down someone else? How can we have a conversation about the type of basketball that we're watching without trying to tear down someone else's legacy? And it, it should be an art form, and it should be something that we should try to do because you don't have to 
pick one player over the best. I'm a fan of basketball. That's why I love what Clay did. What he did was phenomenal. I'm, I, that's why I'm a fan of LeBron James and the great things that he's doing. But Kobe makes a point. How can you enjoy it without tearing down other people's legacy and their stats? Listen, Kobe's overall point is well taken. And the point that sometimes we are not living in the moment because, and I obviously am as guilty of this as anyone in the world, because we are constantly doing a LeBron Jordan comparison. We are constantly saying who's ahead, who's behind, what is, what needs to be done, who's the greatest player of all time. Like, obviously, I do that as much as anybody on television. I enjoy doing it. I think it's a fun debate. But I get why people, Kobe in the, the players or Kobe in the moment would say, guys, I, all, we're, 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 Parsing hairs here. It's it's who's the greatest ever or who's the second greatest ever when we're talking about of all people that have ever played one or two. The reason Kobe is getting flack for that tweet is that first hashtag. Like that's I mean you you alluded to it. You you laughed when you said it. The enjoy my five is a silly thing to include there. Like the, the, because nobody is having that debate. Like, nobody's having the Le LeBron versus Jordan now could, uh, versus Kobe, Kobe. Could Kobe have been talking to his fans so that his fans don't get involved, don't don't get into the debate, Le um, LeBron or Jordan? En enjoy Jordan. Enjoy my five. Enjoy LeBron, what he's doing. I, it, couldn't he have, couldn't he have like, been saying that? Telling his fans, like, yes. like bow out of this one? I Okay. That's interesting. I, I, I'll give you credit there. I didn't, I didn't consider that he was trying to proactively remove... Well, I'm a huge fan of Kobe. I mean, I have Kobe's Laker uniform, the, the Adidas one with my name on it, exactly like he wore. I got all Kobe's basketball shoes. I've been playing this basketball shoes the last 15 years. So I've watched Kobe's career. So as a fan of Kobe, I took that as a marching order of no, not, not, it's about me. Cause Kobe has been talking about the NBA playoffs. It wasn't, it was more to my fan base. Enjoy all this. Okay. So that, this is a very interesting example of two people being able to see the exact same thing and not only seeing it differently, but seeing the opposite. Cause to me, it was an example of Kobe inserting himself where no one else had. To me, it was not an example of Kobe telling his fans, fall back, stay out of this one. It was Kobe trying to, listen, Kobe is, in my eyes, the second greatest shooting guard ever behind Michael, and I believe he's the eighth greatest basketball player of all time. But the gap between him and Jordan, or him and LeBron, is enormous. It is not, it is no longer a debatable point by any metric available to us. And so, like, I, I thought, I don't think anyone last night was thinking about where Kobe is amongst LeBron and MJ until Kobe's tweet. And now we're talking about him. We're talking about how great he was. We're talking about the five rings. Remember those five rings? Remember the 81-point game? Remember, remember those two championships after Shaq left once they got pal? Like, and you feel like, like the day after a game like last well, night. Well, I just we feel like it was it. I, I, and listen, I don't mind. I'll talk about basketball in any way all day. But I, I think it was. CeCe thinks. Uh, there's so many people that are talking about basketball. LeBron said this after the game. They've never played no basketball, not no high level. Why wouldn't you want to hear from one of the greatest artists that we've ever seen play basketball? One of the hardest workers. He developed his game on and off the court. No one could say they worked harder. Why wouldn't we want his opinion compared to all these other people that haven't done anything as far as basketball? CeCe, I don't think anyone is against Kobe giving his opinion. He's been lauded. Oh, as long as he gives it in a way that we like. Well, as long as, here's the thing. He's been lauded all postseason for the detail series he's doing. For there's Nobody's anti-Kobe giving his opinion. And it's not about giving an opinion that we like. I don't think Kobe would be criticized this morning if the tweet like this, if the tweet had said, come on, guys, LeBron's greater than Jordan. Or come on, guys, Jordan's greater than LeBron. It's the self-serving nature of enjoy my five, enjoy MJ six, enjoy LeBron's quest. Like, that's the part of this people are grabbing, is that he, it's not that he gave his opinion. It's not that he didn't have a right to give his opinion. It's that he It is. It's that he gave his opinion and he inserted him, himself in the opinion. But the, I mean, the, the, he... So you can say something, but just don't say anything about yourself. Like, so Chris, you can talk about any wide receivers. Don't ever include yourself in the conversation. You know? So you can talk, but don't mention yourself. No, no I don't, I don't think that's a fair comparison. Because there isn't... There, Why not? What, because, because, Cece, to be totally candid, like, there is... If we're talking about you... Um, I mean, I don't know a wide receiver that we'd be talking about, maybe, maybe, outside of Jerry, where you don't have an argument you were better than them. This would be... Let me give a football example. If the day Brady is going to or winning a Super Bowl, 
and everyone's having go, go a couple years ago before people had elevated Brady to clearly the greatest ever. People were debating Brady Montana. And Brett Favre tweets, listen, guys, there is no greatest. You know what? Enjoy Brady. Enjoy uh, Montana. Enjoy me. Like, Favre is one of the all-time greats. But nobody has him in that conversation. Wait, do you think Kobe thinks he should be in the same absolutely. conversation with Michael and LeBron? Yeah, I, yeah. Absolutely, 100%. If you follow his career, Kobe was the next guy they compared to Michael Jordan before LeBron. Before the comparisons LeBron, it was Kobe being Bryant. But right now, the, 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 the most, part, most of the people are going to be comparing just LeBron and Jordan, and I, I, right. Kobe it's, inserting himself might have That's, sort of that's the point that I'm making. Way. I know, I, listen, I am not in the business of ever saying to an athlete or to anyone, you don't have a right to give your opinion. Like you and I get into that sometimes. I like to hear honesty from guys. I like to hear their opinions. But I also can look at an opinion and say, well, that's self-serving or that's disingenuous. I don't think this one's disingenuous. I think Kobe truly believes he's better than LeBron. And he's hearing everyone say LeBron's as good as Michael. And say, Kobe's saying, hold on, I was better than LeBron. And you guys didn't say I was better than Michael. Kobe's just wrong about that. Like, I mean, he's just wrong. All right. Hey, coming up, back to some football now. Can Dak Prescott be successful without a number one receiver? This is a monumental moment.